Shane Barber here for CG Master Training, and today I want to show you how you can use DirectX 11 tessellation to power your scenes and actually give that additional geometry that's necessary to really pop your objects. The way we used to do extra detail on objects is we used normal maps to fake lighting as it goes across the surface. And you can see as I move this light across my objects that I'm getting this additional detail in the crevices that really makes the geometry look like it's popping. However, there are limitations to how far normal maps can go, primarily with the silhouette of objects. You can see as I get lower to this object here and look across the surface, I have this flat tangent that goes across and really doesn't make it look like these bricks are popping up. So normal maps give us a certain certain fake when we're actually above them and we're looking down at the surface or the surface of an object but tessellation takes us to the next step with DirectX 11 you're actually able to harness the power of your of your more modern day GPUs on the graphics cards in order to create additional geometry in real time that used to be something we only could do within the movie industry but now with DirectX 11 being integrated into Unreal I'm going to show you how you can just simply through a material system end up giving that extra geometry. So let's get right down to it. First things you're going to want to make sure is that you're running your Unreal Engine editor in DirectX 11. And the way you can tell if you are or not is you come up here to your file menu bar up the top and you can see that it says DX9 is what I'm currently running this in. And we have to run it in DirectX 11 to have access to these newer features. The easiest way to get to that is to go here to View, go down to your Preferences, and you're going to see this option here that says Enable DirectX 11 Rendering. So if I click on that, it's going to ask, would you like to restart the editor now? And I'm going to say yes. And would you like to save? Sure. So I'm going to save all this stuff. It's all good. The editor is going to close, and in a few seconds it will pop back open. And you can see here that it says DirectX 11 now underneath the options. And just to make sure, we can come up here to the file menu and see that it now is stating that I'm running my editor in DirectX 11. Perfect. So let's open up our scene again. All right, so we're back at our scene. And what we are going to do is load up our DirectX 11 folder. Got our package. And I'm going to go to my material system and open that up. So you can see that the material I'm using is very, very default. It's the basics. We got our diffuse for color and our normal map. And that's about all we need at the moment. But I'm going to bring in an additional texture, and this is actually my height map. Now, a height map is a value of black to white, so it's a grayscale image. And with this grayscale image, the white actually tells us what parts should be popping out, and the black will tell us what parts should be pushing in. So if it's Gray though, 50% gray, that is areas that should not be altered at all. So that's a good way to first think about your height map. What we're going to do is we're going to use these new features right here, world displacement and tessellation factor. And I'll explain what these two do in just a second. But I'm going to create a linear interpolate node. And I'm going to create a constant 3 vector by holding down 3 and just clicking in the space. To get the lerp, you hold down L and just click in the space. And the first thing I'm going to set up is I'm going to give us our depth. So let's just maximize this. And the way you control depth is by using the blue channel. And just like your normal map, how red and green refer to the angle uh, that's being pushed out from right to left, the blue refers to the height in a normal map. And the same thing holds true for displacement. So first thing we're going to do is create the depth. So we say, I don't know, negative 5 should work. And we're going to pipe that into A. And we're going to create another one. And we're going to make that a positive 5. And that will be what is being pushed out. And we're going to pipe that into B. All right, so we got these two set up. And then the next thing we want to do is use this height map we developed and pipe that into our alpha. And then this output goes into the world displacement, which is the map, more or less, or the portions we should be affecting using these options here. So anything that is black should be using my depth and anything that is using white should be using my height. So we'll go ahead shift this to the left and the next thing we want to do is set up this tessellation factors and what this refers to is the first thing we need is a constant 2 vector so I'm going to hold down 2 and click and these two values correspond to different things that are going to happen on the object when we're tessellating it. 
Now the idea of tessellation is that I'm adding additional geometry in real time. What that means is I'm subdividing my edges and adding additional triangles as we are running the system. So we start with a lower res model and then progressively add additional triangles to it as using this height map to tell us where those additional triangles should be pushed to. So the first thing is in this constant two vector, the first slot is referring to how many times I should subdivide my edges. And a good value to use for both of these is somewhere between two and six. So for right now, I'm just gonna set up with six for the first slot. And that will essentially subdivide my edges by six times. And then I'm gonna set up the second portion of this constant two vector, which refers to how many times the inner triangles that are being made should be tessellated. So I'm going to set that to a value of four. And these values, you really got to play with them in order to figure out what works best because it's really dependent upon the model. So it's kind of a relative number. But you want to make sure you're, you're efficient with how many times you tessellate an object because it can eventually hog a lot of system resources. So just setting that up for now, that's all we need. And we're just going to pipe that directly into tessellation factors. Nothing's changed. You don't notice anything happening on this object here. So what we're going to do is come down here to D3D11. That refers to direct 3D11 or direct X. And you're going to see we have this option that says D3D11 tessellation mode. And we have three different versions. We have no tessellation, which is your default. Flat tessellation, which is a more efficient use of system resources, but it doesn't give you nice silhouette change. And then PN triangles, which can give you some nice tessellation that goes across and gives and modifies the silhouette pretty significantly. And it also is a good option for avoiding a lot of the seams that are one of the fallbacks to actually using tessellation. So for right now, we're just going to choose flat tessellation. And you can already see it starting to affect our surface here. So what we've done is adding this, this option here, we've actually pushed the physical geometry of this object and are making those bricks pop out and descend into the object. So let's see what it looks like with a wireframe. So I'm going to open up my options here underneath miscellaneous. Let's go ahead and drag this up so we can see. Options underneath miscellaneous, we have wireframe. So I'm going to turn that on and you're going to see right now that my object here is being heavily tessellated. Look at that. We have all these additional triangles that are being added to the object and really creating this, this additional geometry that allows us to push up the surface. So let's go ahead and deactivate tessellation and see what happens. You can see that without tessellation or world displacement, the original surface of my object looked like this. Very low res, not doing a lot. And then when we take this and we actually apply it, we're already displacing based off of this here, but we're adding additional geometry to allow us to get that fine detail that goes along the side here using tessellation factors. So let's see this actually work on an object. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Let's turn off wireframe so we see it actually happening on the model. And I'm just going to click this on right now. And look, it's already of taking effect. So you can see that it's pushing up our geometry. And instead of having that harsh line that just goes straight across, we have real silhouette change that's taking place as world displacement is popping these bricks out to actually create this effect. So this is a pretty good use of tessellation. You can apply this to both creatures, apply it to, to you know, environment portions to actually create this silhouette and this additional detail that you wouldn't get with just a normal map. And the other thing is that changes is that you can actually see the light from the shadows directly affecting based off of how I move this around. So I'm really getting shadows into these these recesses like it it would in the real world as if those were geometry that really did exist and were blocking the shadows. So it's not just a fake of the normal map. Now the normal map is still useful, but this allows you to pop it even further. You're taking it to the next level. So that's the basic use of tessellation. And what we can do is come in here and change how this, this factor works. We'll say we want to tessellate the inner triangle some more and update this. And you should see we get a little bit more finer detail along the edges here, like we did there. Uh, we can also, if we want to, we can play around with the D3D options here with the tessellation type and change the mode to PN triangles, 
which is gonna is a little bit more expensive to run, but we will see some improvements that happen along here, along these edges. Uh, so one of the issues though you're gonna run into when you use tessellation is the process ends up actually moving your geometry where the UV seams are. So if I come in real close here, and let's see, it's probably easier from rotating around. Yep, so you can see right along here that what's happened is where I have the black portions of my map, I'm pushing down inside and we're getting this, this geometry moving actually inside of itself and we can see the opposite side of the of the geometry and so at different places where you have your UV seams such as right here we're actually running into an issue of where it's separating the object and the only way you can really get around that at the current moment they're working on it is to kind of hide these UV seams where best you won't won't see them the other thing you can do is you can actually parameterize your your values here that are dropping your your depth and your height which I'll show you in a later video when it comes to distance based tessellation but you can parameterize this and you just kind of you kind of fake the amount of dissension that should be happening along those certain edges here the other thing you can do is to prevent as much distortion along these UV seams as possible just make sure that wherever this map ends up being set that the you kind of have a gray value along that seam and the gray values will give you a halfway point between these two different options the height and the depth which will be roughly about zero and should should help minimize some of this UV seam breakage however it's it's something they're currently working on hopefully to repair this UV seam issue it's more of a programming issue than it is a a design so only way really right now to get around that is to be clever with how you hide your UV seams, which you should be doing anyway. So, But that is the basics of DirectX 11, and you can really pop a lot of your models and get this nice deformation that takes place across surfaces. And the other benefit is, which I'll show in a future video, is you can do real-time modifications to these surface and actually cause it to fluctuate and change based off of the values that you use for that displacement map.